building on this notion of communication and speech, um, we have the ability to communicate not only verbally using our hyoid bone, sorry, but we can also communicate through nonverbal forms of communication. And some of the examples of these are also listed here, such as body contact, shaking hands, giving a hug. Other examples include ways of talking. If I really emphasize something, then it might mean it's really important and you might want to pay attention. If I started doing hand movements and maybe I'm really excited or just pretending to be excited, but my hand movements will get your attention. Other forms of communication include sounds such as laughing, sometimes yawning, clapping, and then just to use one more example is closeness. How close you stand with someone may be an indicator of how comfortable you are with them. If you don't know someone and they stand real close to you, sometimes immediate reaction would be to take a couple steps back. Because I know not everyone has the same ideas of closeness as far as space is concerned, especially when they feel like someone else is invading their space. Another step of humanness that we should consider is our ability to hunt, the pursuit of animals for food. And yes, I do understand that this is an obvious one, that we're not the only species that hunts, that there's other animals that hunt to survive. But what we should consider also in, also in separating us from other species is the fact that our relatively larger brains and in their complexity, they require large amounts of energy. And in order to develop that energy and function, we do need to consume protein. Protein is easily achieved through hunting animals and eating them. And granted, nowadays we do have grocery stores where we can just go and purchase our protein. But some people, some cultures still depend on hunting, whether it's ritually or for actual survival. It still occurs in our species. Another thing to consider with this as well is we hunt, as shown here, using tools and weapons and strategies to try and get a kill, whether it's large or small. Also, we don't just hunt for food, but we also hunt for recreation as well, as a sport. We hunt and we have trophies afterwards, like this. If you go to Cabela's or Bass Pro Shop, you just walk in and you're inundated by all the animals that they've captured and now had stuffed and have for display as a trophy. And then we also use other animals in order to aid us in our, in our journeys for hunting. We use horses to help us keep up with certain animals. We also even train dogs to go help us hunt, whether you're hunting ducks or other quail or anything like that. It's very unique that we hunt other animals by training other animals in order to aid us in this journey. And then our final step to humanness is food domestication. And this started taking place fairly recently, and it dates back to about 11,000 years ago. And this regards our, the development and our dependence to raise domesticated plants and animals. So in this case, we have a picture of wheat, produce at a market, and cows just some examples of things that we have domesticated in order to provide us with food and to aid us in our survival. Not only should it be noted that we domesticate animals for food, but as mentioned earlier, we domesticate them as companions and as uh, creatures to aid us in hunting. And while this domestication, this process of domestication did lead to us be, uh, adapting a more sedentary lifestyle, this also allowed us well, I should rephrase that. Domestication of food started with you know, grains and vegetables, but now we've almost accelerated it and moved into genetically modified foods, genetically modified animals. We modify animals by including, uh, injecting them with growth hormones. We modify food by changing its genetic structure in order to make it, uh, what do you say, to make it more resilient against certain viruses like the papaya. And we've also genetically modified it to breed, not breed, to grow the stronger and healthier corn. Corn that's going to be able to last longer, especially in cases of drought. We need corn that's going to be a little bit more hardy, so to speak. And with that, that's almost taking food domestication down a further step. And once again, 
even though we've talked about all these things as things that we can see in other animals as well, again, it's our species' unique ability to perform all of these that makes us human.